Good morning everyone. I am on my way down to the sand hills of central Georgia and today I'm going to be doing some road cruising for some upland snakes. The big targets today are both species of hognose snake and pine snakes but it's good conditions for a lot of snakes to be moving so I will take anything I can get. We have some decent cloud cover today and I think the high is only going to be like 81 or 82 so really good weather for snakes to be crossing roads. But um, yeah as you can see I am still in Atlanta here and I have about a two hour drive south so I'm going to make my way down and we will see what we can find today. Alright, first snake of the day is this gorgeous melanistic eastern hognose snake. This is one of my big targets for the day. I'm great time of year for him. Um, hopefully this guy doesn't start spazzing out and playing dead because I'm not touching him right now. Um, I think he's just a little spooked. I'd like to get some good pictures of it. But um, yeah, gorgeous melanistic eastern hognose snake. Um, eastern hognose snakes are pretty common. Um, they have a pretty wide range, but they are really secretive and can be extremely challenging to find. Um, even in these sand hills here where you would expect them to be plentiful, um, I think there's a lot of them here. But you actually see more southern hognose snakes here in these uh, specific habitats where there's um, a lot of turkey oak, longleaf pine, and nice open fields. These snakes love loose, sandy soil. Um, they are great burrowers. Um, always cool to see this is only the second one I have ever found down here so I'm going to get some good pictures of this beautiful eastern hognose snake here help it across the road and we will see what else we can find really good start to the day hopefully we will see some more right here is a closer look at this eastern hognose snake now that I have moved it off the road here I'm really good looking snake these are actually venomous rear fanged colubrids but their venom is specifically for immobilizing toads so it is not deadly at all to humans um, really unique snakes as you can see, they want to play dead as a uh, defense mechanism. Um, if I was to touch this guy, he would probably start spazzing out and playing dead, but I'm not going to do that right now because I want to get some good pictures of him here. Um, this appears to be a male. Um, Eastern hognose snakes do breed in April and May, and we're in mid-May right now, so likely a male out on the move looking for females. And this is what hognose snakes do when you mess with them for any length of time. As you can see, this guy's attempting to play dead here. Um, kind of doing a decent job at it. Um, you just seen this laying on the road. You might think it's a freshly hit eastern hognose snake, but I can assure you he is still alive. He's just wanting to fool me. But anyway, it is looking like this guy isn't going to cooperate for pictures any longer, so I'm going to get him off the road and keep on cruising. First snake of the morning is this nice big eastern rat snake here. Really dark one, almost a solid black. Um, but that's typically how they look up here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. You get some really nice dark individuals. Um, this one's really clean looking as well. Um, super shiny. It's all kinked up here, stretched out in the road in typical uh, rat snake fashion. Right here is a closer look at this eastern rat snake now that I have it in hand. One of the cleanest ones I've seen in a while. Um, reminds me of the really dark uh, black rat snakes that I had back home in Tennessee. But anyway, good start to the day. Um, snakes are moving. Good habitat for these guys as well. Lots of um, closed canopy hardwoods. There's open savannas here. There's a lot of arboreal habitat. So always great to see. But um, 
I'm just going to move this guy off the road here and we will see what else we can find. Good morning everyone. It has been multiple snakeless days and nights since the last time you guys seen me and that is mainly because we have been in a horrible drought here in Georgia. Um, it's just been so dry over the last few weeks. It's been killing the snake movement at night so night cruising has not really been a thing although I have been trying and in the daytime I've been looking for really rare snakes such as northern pine snakes up here in the Blue Ridge Mountains and in other mountain ranges and that has not been working out either so anyway i'm out here in the blue ridge mountains of northeastern georgia today and i'm going to be targeting some of the cooler salamanders that live here um, i feel like it's a good time to take a break from chasing some of these really rare reptiles and have a good time and find some salamanders so i'm going to work my way up this stream here and we will see what we can find today all right first salamander of the day here in the blue ridge mountains is this spectacular looking little echoey salamander just check out the orange spots on the back. These are really cool salamanders. Um, they are from the Mountain Dusky Complex, so they can come in a wide variety of uh, patterns and color variations. And this is one of the nicer looking ones that I have seen right here. Um, they're pretty common throughout most of the southern portion of the, of the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, as you get further up into the Blue Ridge, you get into the Carolina Mountain Duskies, Blue Ridge Duskies, and so on, but they all look really similar. Um, and they are also a really terrestrial species of dusky salamander. They prefer to live around the margins of streams and can even wander a good distance into um, the uplands. And at higher elevations, they can be found in um, wetter spruce fir forest, mixed hardwood and spruce fir, and so on, um, and really don't have to have much water. But I just found this one here under a rock along this beautiful stream. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other cool stuff here, so I'm going to put this little echoey salamander back and flip these rocks, and we will see what else we can find. Next salamander of the day is one of the largest black-bellied salamanders that I have ever found. Just look at the length and the girth of this salamander. Um, this rivals even some of the largest spring salamanders that I have ever seen. Um, these are the largest members of the genus Desmognathus, as you can see. Super girthy and long. Um, this is about as big as you're going to see one right here's my hand for a comparison um, at this size these are top predators they'll really eat anything they can get a hold of um, other salamanders one this size could even give a spring salamander a run for its money i mean this is just insanely stocky and really long as well just look at the size of the head on this salamander um, Really cool to see them this big. Um, in some areas of the range, they're actually smaller, but here in this area of the Georgia Blue Ridge, you can get some monsters. And yeah, one of the largest black bellies I have ever seen. Really cool. Um, Akoe salamanders are one of the smallest um, members of the genus Desmognathus. Obviously, seepage salamanders and pygmies are um, the two smallest. The mountain duskies aren't far behind, though. And uh, these are the largest, so. Really good example of a black-bellied salamander here. Just look at this thing, massive. I'm going to get some good photographs of this salamander because it is a large, really unique one. And keep on hiking and we'll see if we can find some snakes or some other species of salamanders. First snake of the day is this massive northern ringneck snake here. They make the ringnecks big up here in the Georgia Blue Ridge. This is a really long one, and just look at the size of that head. It's really girthy as well. Um, I flipped it under this rock right here. It's pretty hot now, but we're at a pretty high elevation, so snakes are still under rocks. So I'm going to let this ringneck go here and keep on flipping, and hopefully we will be able to turn up a milk snake or something else. Second snake of the day is this nice, attractive Eastern Garter snake here. Normally these guys are everywhere up here. Um, could be a little early in the season because this is a super high elevation mountain, at least for uh, Georgia standards. But um, I flipped this one under a rock. A little bit surprising because the rock um, felt pretty hot. It's kind of a rock on rock situation. This is a really pretty one here. There's also some really dark garters up here, some of the bluish ones. Um, these snakes are crazy cold tolerant and range really far north. That's one reason there's so many of them up here in these high elevation 
um, rock bogs. They do really well up here along with um, copperheads and timber rattlesnakes. But anyway, good looking eastern garter snake. I'm going to take some quick photos and keep on hiking this habitat. And we will see what we can turn up today. All right, next dusky salamander of the day is this nice big fat seal salamander here. This is another large species of Desmognathus. As you can see, this one has a little bit of the reticulated pattern on the back. Um, kind of like the seal salamanders that occur further up into the Appalachians. But it also has some traits um, of the uh, populations that occur further down into the Piedmont. So really cool to see and would be interesting to do genetic work on these guys because there could be potentially um, three different lineages of them that could deserve species status. So um, really cool to see, but I'm just going to put this guy back under its rock here and we will see what else we can find. And the next salamander of the day is one of the big targets up here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. This is the seepage salamander. And if you can't already tell, this is extremely zoomed in and these salamanders are teeny tiny. Um, they can get a bit bigger than this, but not a whole lot. Um, these are unique among other members of the genus Desmognathus because they are terrestrial direct developers, meaning they go through the larval stage inside the egg and um, hatch out as miniature versions of the adults. So these live around the water in leaf litter um, around seepage areas, hence their name, but they don't actually get in the water. Um, they favor seepages because of the moisture they provide underneath the leaf litter. So these salamanders are leaf litter specialists. Um, really cool, they are the only terrestrial um, members of the genus Desmognathus other than pygmy salamanders, which are closely related and also super small. Um, obviously these are much less habitat specific than pygmy salamanders, but they still have their little niche um, in seeps underneath the leaf litter. Um, pygmy salamanders are much more restricted by elevation, whereas these guys can be found anywhere from about 4,500 feet down to some really low elevations in the uh, foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and even in the Piedmont in isolated areas. But yeah, really good looking seepage salamander here. I'm stoked to see these finally. This is actually a lifer for me. I've been wanting to see them for a while, but I've put it off until today. Um, yeah, really awesome to see. I'm just going to put this little seepage salamander back here and we will see if we can find some more. And right here is one more look at this gorgeous little seepage salamander here. My camera has been having trouble focusing on this individual because it is just so tiny. But uh, I have it on this leaf here now and it has been very cooperative for photographs. And the video is actually kind of picking it up here. It doesn't look too bad. So I'm just going to put this little seepage salamander back under its leaf litter and keep on working this habitat and we'll see if we can find some more of these or something else and right here we have another one of the big targets for the day this is a female dwarf black-bellied salamander and yes this is her eggs right here um, normally these salamanders will actually attach their eggs to flat surfaces um, on the ground um, but these eggs are attached to the underside of this rock here almost like how a urisia would lay eggs um, Obviously this, these were underneath the rock and I flipped it and uh, it revealed her and the eggs. So anyway, uh, dwarf black-bellied salamanders have a much smaller range than normal black-bellied salamanders. They're limited to a few specific drainages here in the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains of North Georgia. But anyway, as you can see, these dwarf black-bellied salamanders are much smaller than regular black-bellied salamanders. And this girl right here is probably a quarter of the size of that monster true black bellied that I found earlier in this video. Um, the two look very similar. Um, dwarf black bellies are slightly more aquatic. They're kind of more closely related to shovel nose salamanders. And they love these small headwater streams just like what we're in right here. Um, really nice habitat. I'm sure there's Carolina spring salamanders in here as well. Hopefully we will turn up some patch nose salamanders today because I have moved down into the Blue Ridge foothills where they occur. But um, anyway, another um, species of Desmognathus, dwarf black-bellied salamander. I'm going to leave this girl alone here and put her rock back and let her continue guarding her eggs. And right here we have dwarf black-bellied salamander number two for the day. This one is quite a bit larger than that female that we seen just a minute ago with those eggs back there. As you can see for black-bellied salamander standards, it's still pretty small. Um, 
kind of short and chunky but for a dwarf black belly this is about as big as they're going to get and as you can see with this one it's really dark i kind of has some scarring on its head looks like it would be a really old salamander so yeah slightly different look from the last one um it's going up under the bank here that might be the end of this one unfortunately i thought i had it where we could get a good clip but anyway right here at this spring head um really good looking dwarf black bellied i'm going to keep on working this habitat here and we will see what else we can find good afternoon everyone it has been another day since you guys last seen me and I did not find all of my salamander targets yesterday, but I did find a good bit of them and I got to gain some experience in some specific habitat types that I had not spent much time in before and I got to see a new area. So really good times up there yesterday. But anyway, um, the rain came through last night, which will be great for getting snakes moving after the long drought that we were in. But the bad news is it is going to rain again tonight and it is going to start right after dark when it would be prime time for reptiles to be moving. So it's looking like it's going to be a little wet to get any snakes tonight. But the good news is it is perfect conditions for red-legged salamanders to be moving. Um, as you can see, I'm in a hotel room here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. So I'm going to be out here all night hiking for red-legged salamanders. There's also a few other species that I'm hoping to see, but I'm going to focus on the red legs first and if I have time tonight or tomorrow morning to get to the other ones, that will be great as well. But anyway, I'm going to leave my hotel room now and head up to the mountain where I'm going to be hiking for most of the night, and we will see what we can turn up. All right, first salamander of the night is this little Blue Ridge two-line salamander. Um, these are much smaller bodied and more slender on average than the... Uh, their close relatives, the southern two-line salamanders, and they are limited to the Blue Ridge Mountains, hence their name, and they can live in some pretty high elevations up here. I think we are um, around 5,000 feet here, but um, pretty cool. I haven't seen any streams nearby, but I imagine there has to be something because they still need water to reproduce, but um, yeah, nice little Blue Ridge two-line salamander. Um, these can be a lot more vibrant than this and be almost a neon orange sometimes but this one's pretty typical looking not a whole lot different from um, some of the southerns other than being smaller and more slender so i'm just going to leave this little salamander on the crawl here and we will see what else we can find and right here we have our main target for the night this is the red-legged salamander plethodon shermani um, if you look closely you will see that this one has little red legs all right, right here is a closer look at this red-legged salamander here. As you can see, um, a grayish metallic color all over. Um, really light gray cheeks and beautiful orange kind of reddish legs. Um, again, not as red as they can be. Um, this kind of resembles some of the Chioa bald salamanders that you see where that red is really faded. And I'm hoping to see some of those by at least tomorrow morning, but I'm not going to make any promises because this is the main species that I came up here to see. But, um, yeah, red-legged salamander, Plethodon shermani. Um, these are high elevation specialists like many of the other gray-cheeked salamanders. Um, this isn't really a spruce fir forest here. It's pretty hardwood dominated, but it is really high, and it's one of those places that seems to stay permanently wet up here. So hopefully we will see many more, but anyway, I'm just going to get some photographs of this beautiful salamander and we will see what else we can find. And right here we have red legged salamander number two for the night. Still doesn't have the bright lead, red legs like some of them do, but as you can see, it's got some coloration there. Pretty nice one, slightly bigger than the last one we found. But anyway, another good looking red legged salamander I'm going to keep on shining and We'll see if we can find some with some brighter red legs. And right here we have another red-legged salamander. This one is a really light gray with extremely red legs. Um, maybe the prettiest one of the night so far. Um, I think it's tied between this one and the last one that had the really bright legs. But um, This one is smaller, but just really nice looking. I'm just out on the crawl here doing what they do. It's awesome seeing numbers of these. They're behaving a lot like many of the other gray-cheeked um, salamanders and much like the red cheeks. I haven't got big numbers of them, but we're starting to get into quite a few here now that we're in this little clearing away from some of the more extensive vegetation. 
But anyway, I'm just going to get some photographs of this little salamander and leave it out on the crawl here and see if we can find some more. And right here we have the actual best red leg salamander of the night. This one is bigger and it has more red on its legs than any of the previous ones. Um, really the perfect example of a red legged salamander. It appears to have some small siri going on here, so I would say this is a big male. Um, just a really textbook, um, perfect looking red leg salamander. Um, there's also a, co a koei salamanders, and I think there's imitators up here that also have red legs, and they're actually mimicking these uh, red leg pentagons. So hopefully, we will see some of those tonight. But anyway, best looking one of the night by far. Really stoked to see this one. I'm going to get some good photos and keep on shining. And we'll see if we can find an even better looking one or some other species of salamanders. And right here we have yet another red-legged salamander. I've actually lost count of how many we have seen now. And this one has some nice red legs too. A little bit thinner and smaller than the last one, but... Still a really good looking salamander. Just out on the crawl here. Um, these salamanders are everywhere tonight. Perfect conditions for them. Um, it rained here earlier today and some last night. I actually thought it was going to rain again tonight. But it's not right now. But usually for plethodon, a rain before it gets dark is exactly what you want. So I'm going to leave this salamander to what it's doing here and keep on shining. And we'll see if we can find some more. And right here we have two of the strangest looking black-bellied salamanders that I have ever seen. I have these two in the specimen box here because uh, being desmogs, they are very likely to get away if I get them out in the open here. This one has these nice gold speckles um, all over its back. I know they kind of have that anyway, but these are just different looking. I've never seen black-bellied salamanders look quite like this. And this other one has this weird, almost calico pattern. Um, I guess these are still black-bellied salamanders, and they just look really weird up here, but uh, really unique looking. I'm going to attempt to get both of them out here so we can get a closer look. I'm currently working this nice high elevation spring here in search of Blue Ridge Spring salamanders, and I have not found any yet. But anyway, two really bizarre looking black-bellied salamanders. Always cool to see these guys, but I'm going to put them on this moss here, and we'll get a closer look. And right here is a closer look at this first black-bellied salamander. Really unique speckles, I guess almost white speckles, but uh, it's really golden looking, not super big, just a really bizarre looking one. Um, not sure if these are just isolated up here or what's going on, or if any genetic work has even been done on them, but they look significantly different. But um, this salamander is being really cooperative right now and posing well for me, so I'm going to get some photos and we'll take a look at the other one. And right here is a look at the second one. Um, just check out that calico pattern. Try to make a dive, but this is not one you want to lose. Um, probably, um, at least pattern-wise, the most unique looking black-bellied I've ever seen. I've seen some weird ones before that I've lost, but uh, this is up there with some of the nicest ones. But anyway, I'm going to get some photographs and put it back in its stream here. And right here we have another red leg salamander. This one is down here by this spring that we've been working for Blue Ridge Spring Salamanders. Uh, definitely the biggest one of the night and arguably one of the prettiest too. I know I've been saying that, but it seems like they keep getting better and better. But anyway, um, just found it out on the crawl here. This is a nice long one, really fat, stocky. Just look at those red legs. That is incredible. Um, no other salamander that looks quite like that other than the Chioa bald salamander, and you really can't tell the two apart. Um, it's basically just a range thing, and the Chioa bald salamanders have typically less red on their legs. Um, I'm planning on looking for them in the morning, but we'll see how that goes. But anyway, um, another nice red leg salamander. I'm going to keep on working this habitat, and we'll see what else we can find tonight. And right here we have yet another red-legged salamander. This one has really bright red legs. Look at that. They're out on the crawl everywhere. Zach has another one up here that is larger. It appears to be missing a tail. It looks like it's trying to regenerate. 
Um, could have been took off by a big spring salamander. This one also has really bright red legs. So beautiful. It's awesome just seeing them out here doing what they do. Sitting around waiting to ambush insects. But anyway, we're going to keep on working this here and see what else we can find. Okay, right here is one of our other main targets for the night. This is an Akoe salamander, which is a pretty common species of mountain dusky here in this region. But as you can see, it has red cheeks. Um, in this area, sometimes Akoe salamanders will actually develop red legs and red cheeks because they are mimicking the plethodon. And I would actually expect the ones up here to have red legs because this mountain has red leg salamanders on it. But for whatever reason, this little weirdo has red cheeks. So really cool to see. Um, Again, just an Akoe salamander, but it's cool seeing them with um, these color variations up here where they share habitat with some of the nicer high elevation plethodons. So anyway, I'm going to get some photos of this little Akoe here, and uh, this may be it for the night. All right, I just made it back to my hotel room, and it is 2 a.m. now. I am absolutely exhausted. It's been a really long night, but it's been a productive night. Um, seemingly hundreds of red-legged salamanders out there, exactly what I drove three hours up here to see. You really can't ask for more. Um, I was hoping to get a Blue Ridge Spring Salamander, which would have been really nice, but that just wasn't happening. You can't find everything. Maybe I'll find one tomorrow. But yeah, it's 2 a.m. I'm going to be getting up in about five hours to drive up to Chioa Bald in search of Chioa Bald salamanders and some other cool species. But I'll be putting that footage in the next video. So I feel like it's a good time to end this video here. So uh, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. Do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and good night.